Hi guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and you are watching the Spectrum AR636 programming series. This is part 16, properly verifying your control surface movement. Now that we've got the AR636 bound to the iX12, we want to make sure that all the control surfaces are deflecting in the right directions to include both input from the sticks as well as AS3X gyro correction. Let's go ahead and get the battery plugged in and allow the AR636 to initialize and then we'll test everything. At this point we're connecting the battery to the AR636 receiver. We'll wait for the AR636 to initialize. Alright, once the receiver has initialized and your ESC has initialized, we can go ahead and test the control surfaces. What we expect to see is that when I move the right stick to the right side, we expect to see the right hand aileron go up. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And the right aileron is going up. When I move it to the left, the left aileron goes up. So our ailerons are moving in the right direction. We also want to test the rudder. When I move the rudder stick to the right, I expect it to go to the right. When I move it to the left, I expect to see it move to the left. So the rudder is also moving in the correct direction. And last will be the elevator. When I pull down on the elevator, I expect to see the elevator go up. So when I apply up elevator, I get up elevator as expected, and when I push forward, I expect to see the elevator go down, and that is all working as expected. So again, our ailerons are all working as expected. So right and left are working the way we expect them to. When I apply right rudder and left rudder, the rudder is moving the way I expect it to, as well as up and down elevator. So here's some up elevator and some down elevator. Excellent. To enable AS3X, the first thing that we'll need to do to test AS3X is accelerate the throttle beyond 25%. At that point, AS3X is enabled and our control surfaces will correct the way we expect them to. I'll go ahead and disable my throttle cut and apply some throttle. Now we do want to hold on to the model because we have our propeller installed. So we'll apply some throttle to get past 25%. Alright, and now we can test the direction of our AS3X corrections. I'll go ahead and re-engage my throttle cut. Make sure that my propeller doesn't go spinning off on me. And we will enable the gyro. So at this point, I should be able to hear my control surfaces making corrections based on the, uh, the movement of the receiver. So I've got AS3X enabled. Right now I don't have safe enabled, but I do have AS3X. So when, and when AS3X is enabled, that's just our gyro correction. So, uh, you know, if the plane was flying nice and steady like we see here, and we have a gust of wind come that forces the airplane, you know, to jar around a little bit, we're going to hear that correction taking place. Now, when a or when the the wind forces, when the turbulence forces any of the control surfaces to move, what AS3X should do is apply enough control surface to counteract that movement from the wind. So if this wind comes up, this elevator should also come up with it to try to get the wing back down to straighten level flight. So what you can do, because a lot of the movements, especially on a smaller model like this, are not very exaggerated, you can put your hand over the control surface, and as you move the control surface up, 
I can feel that the, uh, like as the wing comes up, I can feel the control surfaces going up, which would push that wing back down. So my ailerons are correcting in the right direction right now. We can do the same thing with our rudder for yaw. And I can feel that the rudder is moving in the right direction. So when the tail shifts this way, the rudder is moving this way to push the tail back. And the same for the elevator. And I can feel that the elevator is also correcting in the right direction. So when the tail comes up, the elevator comes up to push the tail back down until it's nice and straight, and then everything straightens back out. So all of my AS3X corrections are moving in the right direction as well. The last thing we want to do is test our safe mode. All right, so now the airplane is in safe. So we want to test our elevator, the throttle mix that we set up in the radio. So right now we can see our elevator. We'll go ahead and disable throttle cut. And again, you want to have a good firm hold of the airplane when you're doing this. So we want to watch our elevator. And we can see that the elevator mix is working. As I apply more throttle, the elevator is moving into the up elevator position, which would cause the tail to go down and the aircraft to climb. So the elevator mix is working as intended. And when safe is enabled, I should also expect to see the Let's go ahead and re-engage our throttle cut. I should also expect to see my control surfaces correcting to always try to keep the aircraft level. And I should also see the bank angles starting to work. Now, what we can maybe see here is I'm gonna hold the aircraft kind of over the edge. And let's watch what the elevator is doing. Like right now, I've got the nose of the aircraft pointing down, and my elevator is trying to push the aircraft back straight. So now the aircraft is straight and level, and you'll see that the elevator is moving to compensate for that. Now, as I get the airplane into a nose-up attitude, the elevator is trying to push the nose back down. And at this point, we're at a straightened level flight orientation. You can see the same thing on the ailerons. As I move the aircraft around, this is straightened level. And you can see the, uh, the aileron movement here. If you pay attention right here, you can see that that aileron is trying to push the wing back up to level flight. Right now, it's back at level flight. And there you can see it trying to push the, uh, the wing back down. So it will maintain level flight all the time. So safe is also functioning normally. And the other thing that I would expect to see is my bank angle in it. So, if I do apply, say, right elevator, it's going to push this wing down until I get to the bank angle in it, and then it's not going to let me push it down anymore, right? So there we see that it's kind of normalized, and any time I adjust out of that bank angle, it's going to try to, you know, correct it. And right there is our straightened level. Now, if I let the stick go, we can see, now I've let the stick go, we can see that it's gonna to try to push that wing back up until we get back to straightened level flight. Right, so all of our safe functionality is working as intended as well. All right, the last thing that we wanna check in all three flight modes is that our panic button is working. So right now I am in my gyro off mode and what we want to do is get the aircraft into a fairly, uh, you know, unconventional attitude. 
where see if we can get you know both the aileron movement and the, the elevator movement captured here. And when I hit the panic button, which I'm gonna go ahead and hit now, all right, so we see that our elevator and our ailerons have moved. So the elevator is trying to push the tail down. So now the elevator is getting back to being straight. And the aileron is trying to push the wings in this direction. And now they are nice and straight and level. So it looks like my panic functionality is working with AS3X disabled. So that's flight mode one. Flight mode two, AS3X is now enabled. So again, here's flight mode one. No AS3X. You can't hear the, the servos making any corrections. But panic still works. Right? That's cool. With AS3X enabled, you can hear my servo trying to make corrections. Let's test the panic function. And that is working as intended. And lastly, is in safe mode. You know, the plane is actively trying to maintain level flight. And if I hit the panic button, it will go back to straight level flight. So everything is working as intended. At this point, we can take the aircraft out to the field and give her a test flight. All right, we have now properly verified the control surfaces of our aircraft are moving in the right direction. Stay tuned for part 17, where we'll be performing the software installation and overview of the AS3X programming application for your iOS or Android device.